Okay, so I am picking up from the last video. This one will be a little longer. And this is talking, I was going to talk about how to deal with that spreadsheet once it's in your Google Drive. So it's already in your Google Drive. Let's go find it. So Happy Father's Day is what Google is saying. And we click on Google Drive. And for me, I'm going to go double click on this folder where I hid my file. All right, now if what you do is you just you just open this, it'll be crazy like I showed you last time. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say open with Google Sheets. Should open in just a second. Okay, and since we're in a browser, we can hold down control while clicking minus to minimize or plus to enlarge. So you can pick whatever view size is good for your eyes. I recommend that you use something other than Google Sheets if you have another option just because it's faster, but sometimes this is all you have. So I'm going to do the whole demo this way so that you, so I know everybody has access to these tools. Okay. So first of all, you should know this is a living document, and so some of the things don't look completely finished because they're not. For example, uh, in the planning tool, if you see some stars, that means these items haven't been selected by that unit yet. They haven't decided, so for example, they haven't decided when it's going to be done at home, when this requirement's going to be done at home. So they just put a star there to mean that they're going to fill that in later couple things to show you here in the planning tool is if you want to resize the columns what I just did is I clicked on one column oops click on one column and then go to the next column you want to click on hold shift and then click now you've highlighted multiple columns and this will allow you to resize all those three columns the same size specifically I want to stretch them so that I can read the contents better. So all these guys look a little garbled. Again, I'm going to hold shift while I click and then I'm going to just stretch these guys out. On a regular spreadsheet these seem to be a lot easier to grab. There we go. Okay, so now it's just a little easier to see. I want to point out the calendar. This is Montgomery County Public School again control plus to enlarge this and so if you happen to be Montgomery County Maryland then all the school data is good for you and otherwise just change all the colors for everything however you like maybe you want to know how to change a color so this is a particular cell and then you should be able to um, change the color of that particular cell I'm gonna pause for a second so I can figure out how to do that so apparently I want to click over here. Let's see if this works. Yay! That worked. But I don't want to do that, so undo is the most useful button in the whole thing. Okay, so you can change your colors and change all the contents here, and there you go. Okay, so back to the planning tool. This is the guts. So this is, again, I'm holding control while clicking minus to make this view smaller. Okay, um, you should notice that there are 444 elements in this table. I guess 443 because the header row is row 1. But you should be able to see down here 444 and that reassures you that you're looking at the whole sheet. And it looks like it's all good. Did you notice that when I scrolled the top row didn't move, that's because it's locked. It's called frozen in Google Drive, and I'm sorry, in Google, in Google um, Sheets. So if I wanted to unfreeze this, I could click on View and freeze nothing. And then this would no longer be frozen and it would be free to move like the rest of them. Okay, but if I wanted to freeze it again, I can just say, view freeze one row you can you can freeze whatever rows 
from wherever, whatever you want. You can make a header that's, you know, six rows thick, but you don't really need to for this demonstration. Okay, um, wanted to talk about funnels. These, f these, uh, these filters, they look like funnels, and you can, you can sort by these various things. So I can say, I just want to see, I can say clear all, and then select the ones I want. So maybe I care about December and January. And then what I should get is, it hides the things I don't care about. And so this is telling me everything that needs to be ho done at home in January and December. Okay? Maybe I want to. I want to check more of these too. Maybe maybe I want to see everything that needs to be done at home, and so I check everything that's been assigned a month at home. And then maybe I'm lazy, and because I wanted to show you something else, it's not quite doing what I thought it would. What happens when you do these these filters or these funnels? is it actually hides various rows. And so if you notice row 8 is now hidden. So you should in theory be able to click those and now I'm going to right click and say unhide rows. But it's not letting me do that. But in other spreadsheets it allows me to do that trick. But in Google uh, it wants me to unhide it the way I hid it, so it doesn't allow me to go through the back door to unhide all this stuff. But it's not that bad because if I look, I notice these are little tiny, let me zoom in for a second. You see how these are little blue arrows? That means everything's good. This little green thing means that I've, I've applied a filter. So I can just say um, clear, select all, and that should work. Okay, and then all my rows should come back. Another thing you can do is you can filter by the description text. So this could be useful if you're saying, wait a minute, I know there was some requirement and I can't find it. So you can say, text contains garden. I don't know, there's got to be some requirement that has the word garden in it. Okay, there you go. So it's telling you all the requirements that have the word garden somewhere in the description. So again, that could be a useful uh, tool. Um, again, we want to get rid of this condition and then we'll get all our rows back. One thing that keeps tricking me is I have to keep sliding this, this up. Okay, I wanted to show you how to turn all the filters on and off. That's under data, and you can just turn off all the filters. And this turns us back into a regular spreadsheet that doesn't have all those cool options. Okay, put that back in. So these colors, I just showed you how to change the cell colors. I could just say, um, I don't want this to be black anymore. I don't know. Maybe I don't want any of these to be black because if I'm going to try to print it, it's going to look ugly on my printer. Maybe I turn them all to gray so I can print it or something. I don't know. But you can change these colors around, so the colors don't really mean anything. They're there for your convenience. If you want to change the text color, that would be here. So you could change the text color. But if I just want to change the fact that my data has filters, I can just put in the filter again. And there it is. That's all it took to add those filters. Okay, uh, if I want to in highlight the entire sheet, this little box right here allows me to highlight the entire sheet. Just like each row or column can be highlighted by clicking its own row or column, the whole entire sheet can be highlighted by clicking right there if you need to use that feature. Okay, I wanted to mention what is from BSA what versus what is local for um, PAC 434. Okay, so these things here and here are BSA. This is just a name that Autumn has given so that you can identify the various requirements. So it's a unique identifier. In fact, if you mess up the ordering of your spreadsheet and you want to put it back in order, I found that uh, sort by den, then by name seems to put it back in a good order. 
I'll show you that in a second. Um, descriptions, again, this is something that she typed up, but it's a paraphrase of what's in the book. Now, all these are specific to her pack, so that you can change at your will. And what else? Sequence dependencies. So these sequence dependencies are from the manual. And let's, let's, um, oh, this is possible completion at Cub Scout day camp for people who are very, very organized. As she said specifically, don't quote me on any of this if there's something in that column because every day, scout, every day camp could be different. But for example, if, you're, if your kids do knots, you could say, hey, we did this at day camp. And then that would be a possible way to record that that had occurred. Um, I wanted to show you, yes, what happens if I clear everything and just say, all these guys. How many different events, or how many different requirements rather, have certain dependencies? And it looks like I only see four. Okay, so these four have different inner den dependencies, so they have to be what? The first one is tiger, bear, or wolf, some kind of interdependency, and so on and so forth. Okay. Having trouble clicking apparently. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. Select all and OK. Everything should come back. All right. So, what else did I want to tell you? Okay, I wanted to show you how to sort. So, I've been using these filters, but it's very similar to the concept of sorting. So what if I just wanted to sort? I can click up here, this little box, that means highlight the whole entire sheet. Then I go up to data, sort range, meaning sort the whole sheet. Okay, and I have a header row. And so maybe I want to sort by, I don't know, uh, pack meeting tells you the month when something's supposed to happen. So maybe I want to sort of, it's going to be alphabetical, unfortunately, instead of by the order of the months, but at least it'll sort it. And so maybe I just want to know what's happening and I want it to be clustered that way. See, so then I can just scroll down and see what just happened. And clicking again is a problem for some reason. On a regular spreadsheet, I don't have trouble clicking. It's just this net interface. But you can see now everything's organized by pack meeting month and it's inconveniently all alphabetical, but the path, the fact is at least all the March 2016 disability awareness, they're all together, or, you know, March 2016 hiking prep, it's all together. So if you want to cluster something, it's this, this is not totally a separate concept from using this, this filter, right, because, but it's just sorting, it's putting everything by its own filter here. So maybe I want to s filter out March 2016, clear everything and then just try March 2016 hiking prep okay so then everything else hides and I just have those columns or sorry those rows okay so it's just another tool that you have at your disposal let's see now I've messed up the order Okay, so I want to fix the order. Click on this data sort. And I'm going to sort by den and then add another sort column. I'm going to sort by just the name. And everything should come back to the way it was in a convenient order for us. I think I showed you hide and unhide rows and columns, but I'll just show you anyway, again, just to make sure I showed you. What if I want to hide these, for example? I just clicked and then I hit, let me just do that again to make sure I'm not lying to you. I clicked on one column and then I hit control, hold control while I click. Ah, that's multiples. Okay, so I did lie to you. If I click on one and hit shift click, I'll get all three of those. So control click if you want them to not be continuous, but shift click if you want them to be continuous. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I could say hide columns. The same thing's going to work for rows. And so then you get these little arrows here. And if you want to expand that back out again, you should be able to very gently click that and it should come back out again. But if the clicking doesn't work, be careful not to delete when you're unhiding. Um, if that doesn't work, you should be able, you're, you're highlighted on here, you should be able to right click and say unhide. Now let me try this. So we know the hiding is between these two arrows so I can click and then I can go shift click. Now I'm going to right click and I now I'm able to unhide. Okay, so sometimes there's more than one way of unhiding stuff because unhiding is uh, pretty important. All right, I wanted to show you the efficiency matrix. And this just tells you what types of activities are highly required. And I wanted to show you the sum command. So for example, you can go say here, I want to put something there. And I want to put a formula. So I could just type anything I want here and it would go in that box. But if I type an equal sign first, I can make use of all these math formulas, the most useful of which is to add things up. But if I don't want to add a whole range, I don't want to say I want to add cell P3 plus P4 plus P5. It's easier to type in the word SUM and then the first element will be P3 and then I'm going to type a colon and then P14. And it's going to tell me that there's 124 here. Um, since I'm sitting here, I'm going to highlight this and just stretch this out because I'm not happy with the fact that nature got cut off. There we go. All right, so there's 124 total. Now you know how to use the sum command. And for example, this 14, she got from N5 plus O5, and I can see that right here that she has that formula. And so if I change something in here, I miscounted, right? If you miss, if she miscounted and goes and changes this, this will all update to follow along. So you can just, she just used the bold to bold off the ones that are most important. And so it just gives you an idea of things to emphasize. Star just means there's something in that category. So bicycling can only be an activity. Service project could be a meeting or an activity. Okay, and so forth. And I think that's it for the, my list of things I wanted to show you. If you have any questions, I'm the webmaster. You can email me. And if I can't answer your question, then I will ask her. All right. And uh, we are very thankful to Autumn for this awesome web page. Sorry, this awesome um, spreadsheet. And it's very, very useful. So hope hope you guys can make use of it.